Hey everyone, the name is Erector and today I want to explain to you the difference between the dominant and the inferior function and I want to explain to you why there are certain things you always forget to do. Now to explain this I want you to imagine you have two stacks of paper on your desk. One is assigned to the dominant function and one is assigned to the inferior function. All these stacks of paper reflect tasks that you need to do that require the use of this particular cognitive function on a daily basis. Things that require you to use introverted intuition. Things that require you to use extroverted feeling. Things that require you to use extroverted sensing. All these things are assigned to a table. and You have already developed a belief about what comes before the other. And now the dominant function is always your top priority. It's what you do before anything else. As soon as a new paper comes up in this stack, you pick it up. A new dominant function issue, a new quest for the dominant function, okay, I'm there, I'll be there, I'll do it, I'll take care of it, I'll handle it. So often what we do is we zoom through our life and everything that's happening around us and we look for things to do with the dominant function. We always put this one forward, this is the first foot we put forward in life, it's the first thing we say yes to, it's the first thing we put in our to-do list, it always ends up on top. And even if we don't put it on top, we'll still do it before the inferior function will still always find a way intuitively to put it ahead of the other functions. So you can imagine how this is a problem. There are times when we need to use the inferior function because it is of objective importance. But subjectively we have a list of priorities in our mind, a dominant, auxiliary, tertiary and inferior function. And in our head the dominant is always regarded as more important, even at times when we, if we thought the situation true, would recognize that the inferior needed to be taken care of. So a general thing is, we end up with more pieces of paper on the inferior. Third, the tertiary. Second, the auxiliary. And the dominant function, that one is always cleaned out. So the dominant function is always taken care of, it's always out of the way, there is no paper on this stack. As soon as a paper, piece of paper comes up, it's out of the way, Shwoosh, it's gone. But the inferior starts to amp up, we get more and more paper on the inferior function. <laughs> and often these papers become increasingly important to deal with over time. So what ends up happening is we get a reminder and a reminder fee and a reminder fee and it keeps smashing at our psyche and we keep recognizing oh this has to happen. I have to do this at some point. I have to get through this. These tasks that have been assigned to the inferior function that I've delayed in for so long they need to happen. Now what tends to happen then is we experience a tidal wave we start having nightmares of being covered in paperwork. We start feeling overwhelmed by all these papers, all these pieces of paper on the inferior function. We start feeling the weight. At some point we start getting stressed out because we have pieces of paper that we are not dealing with, that we know we have to deal with. At some point we experience a kind of shift in the mental psyche where we are forced to temporarily or permanently rearrange our priorities and redecide what is more important to you in life to be happy. And you know, the problem is we tend to tell ourselves, no, it's not important enough. We know, we know, we understand, yes, it is important, but no, it's not important enough. The dominant always comes first. So what I see is a bunch of different philosophies regarding how we can experience the dominant and the inferior function. A common problem is as soon as the dominant paperwork is gone, we start looking for more. Instead of moving forward to the aux, tertiary or inferior paper slots, we keep doing the dominant or we keep doing overdoing the dominant. We keep overworking it or doing it more than necessary. We start spend more time on it. We attribute more importance to it. We, uh, when it's gone, we think about it afterwards. We analyze it. We process it. We go over it from more angles, from more perspectives. So naturally, this is held up as a strength in our lives. We overdo it, but overdoing it, of course, can also be a problem. 
and looking for problems, looking for quests, looking for tasks that will only speak to the dominant function will end up keeping you or putting a big blind spot in your life. You'll end up procrastinating on important tasks. And here is the truth. Here is the secret truth. Everyone is procrastinating on something. It's not just you, INFP. Everyone is procrastinating on something. If you're procrastinating on extroverted thinking and failing to be productive in your life, the ESTJ is procrastinating on empathy and struggling to get emotional perspective on their life and on their decisions. Everyone is struggling to take time for something. Everyone is missing out on one key activity or a few key activities. So a problem is there is a difference between a dominant function and a flow function. A difference is there is a difference between an inferior function and a stressor. It's not necessarily that things that end up on the inferior file are boring or unimportant. On the contrary, this stack can be filled with green paper. There are things we genuinely enjoy and want to do, but do not allow ourselves in our lives. There are things in our dominant pile that we hate doing and don't really want to do, but spend too much time doing nonetheless. So what happens here is we have a flow function and we have a stress function. But we also have a dominant function and an inferior function. And these things can vary. These things can differ. These two things are not the same. The dominant does not always mean your flow function. And do not always confuse what you are doing on a daily basis with what you would enjoy doing in an ideal world. Where you would be in flow and you would be happy and you would be doing something that came naturally to you. No, instead imagine your dominant and your inferior as your overall script in life. What you tell yourself you are allowed to do. What you tell yourself other people expect of you. What you tell yourself other people ask of you. So you imagine in your head that everyone is constantly asking you to do the dominant. And you imagine if you would not do the dominant that other people would, would yell at you. You imagine in your life that if you are not engaging in a certain task... It's going to cause problems and you over dramatize and exaggerate the importance of the dominant function. You exaggerate the importance of engaging in certain activities and certain cognitive functions. You assume if you don't spend enough time managing other people that people will turn against you or will dislike you. When in fact this might not be the case. This might be the script you've been told. This might be what you're currently telling yourself but it might not be the objective truth. So if you would say to yourself, yeah, actually, I don't really enjoy managing people. Actually, I prefer competing with other people. I like working by myself. I like working at problems independently. I don't want to have to deal with people. Then you're at the point in your life when you're starting to really evaluate happiness. And you're starting to put make happiness the priority. Happiness should be the priority. That's what I've been telling everyone all along. Flow should be the priority. Stress should not be your priority in life. What you should be doing is you should be taking the green papers from every stack and you should be putting them forward as often as possible. As often as possible, this is what you should dedicate your life to. If you have something you truly enjoy doing, you should spend as much time as possible with this. And what I'm saying here is don't give up on or ignore the stress in your life, but hold it as secondary in importance to happiness. Recognize that there are times when I will need to do things that I dislike, things that are difficult, things that bring me stress, things that make me anxious, but also recognize there are limits to how much time I'm ready to devote to this. There are limits to how much stress I'm willing to put up with in a friendship, in a relationship or at work. And there will come a time where I will set, say no. I will say no, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't like doing this. I would prefer to do something else. Recognize that, yeah, there's, it's important to do and engage in your stressors for a certain extent of time. But tell yourself and tell other people, I would prefer if I could spend more time doing what I love. And here's the thing, a lot of people don't even know what they love. They're so focused on what they ought to do or what they've been supposed to do or what they've told themselves is necessary. They're so focused on the dominant function, they don't have time to have flow. They don't have inner balance. They don't feel peace with themselves. They don't feel satisfaction with what they do. They don't feel pride over what they have done or accomplished. 
they don't feel joy in the general things they do on a daily basis. No, they feel frustrated. They feel anxious. They feel insecure. They feel invalidated. They feel angry. They feel upset. They feel bored, numb, tediously bored, you know, exhausted by what they are having to do on a daily basis. And we subject ourselves to these terrible situations on a daily basis. We subject ourselves to doing things we don't want. So a question here is, what should be on my dominant pile and what should be in my inferior pile? Sit down with yourself and put down the cognitive functions you know of and what you know about them. And put these things down on a list for yourself and think for yourself, what do I want to do? And what would happen if I would change my overall priorities in life? What would happen if I put a little less time on this and a little more time on that? Would my life feel better or would it feel worse? Evaluate with yourself from time to time what an activity is causing you to feel. Is it causing you to feel flow or is it causing you to feel stress? Is it going to bring you boredom or is it going to bring you energy? Find that there are certain functions in your life that will bring you energy and motivation. Recognize that these things are more true to who you are than what you are currently doing. These things that you love, these personal interests and hobbies of yours, they say more about who you are than what you are right now. Yeah, it's true. We believe sometimes that we are what we are. We believe we are the simple things we do right now. We're so stuck in our bodies, in our present selves, that we don't even see our potential. We don't see what we could be at our best. We don't see our joys. We don't see those times when we feel most proud. We don't recognize the times when we feel most satisfied with ourselves. We don't recognize when we feel truly at peace. But that signal, that experience will give you a true, a true and rich feeling of who you are. And yeah, a lot of these experiences are only found in one way, by stopping to listen to yourself. A lot of us are in this do, 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 do mentality where it's just constantly do more, do more, do more. And we don't have time to stop, we don't have time to process, we don't have time to think about things. So how could we know? We think processing is doing nothing. And so we assume processing is something bad. But it's an important part of who you are, it's just as important as the part of you that wants to do things. Processing is just as important as doing. Perceiving is just as important as deciding. And what we are searching for fundamentally is inner balance. Balance between all our different sides of ourselves. Balance between all, all, all of our interests and hobbies. And here's the thing that is very near Jungian. We have more than one dominant function and more than one inferior function. More than one flow function and more than one stressor. We have up to four dominant functions and up to four stressors and up to four flow functions and up to four inferior functions. So there's not just one thing you're missing out on in life. There's multiple things. It's not just one thing that is going to bring you stress. There are multiple factors that can cause stress and anxiety. And personality psychology is much, much more complicated than the four cognitive functions you were introduced to when you took your first MBTI test. And that, everyone, that is neo Jungian typology. And I will keep explaining more about this. And if you want to learn even more yourself, start exploring at ericdor.com. Thanks, everyone, for watching this video. And I hope to see you all on the next one.